Back in 2012, I did a very short three minute video on this Singer Instalode film strip viewer. Some of you might remember film strips um, from school. They're about 100 or 150 35 millimeter slides all spooled together, and you play them in various machines. And this machine does that, or did it, but it had a problem that I found out recently, it would not project to the side the way it's supposed to. There's a there's a lens over here, a projection lens over here that it would not work with. And I've tried to get in there and fix it, and that's what I got this out today for. So I made some more video of the insides and things. And we'll do a short review of uh, its features and see if I could get it to work. All right, uh, along the front, you've got your Singer Instalode 35 badge, focus knob. For your film, you can do individual forwards, reverses, and at the end, you can rewind it and it should all go back into the spool. You have a button to pause and restart, and your main control button off. This will turn on audio, this will turn on your lamp. Up here you have tone and volume control. I see here my volume control is missing its little slider nut. I don't remember if that was like that in 2012 or not. But it's gone now. Maybe it was there years ago. I don't know. And our framing control for the picture, sometimes it's half on or half off. Push that in and turn it counterclockwise to frame properly. Alright, up top when you when you eject your film cartridge, you press that down. And if the film doesn't rewind properly, you can manually rewind it there. Pop the cartridge in. Click. Should be good and steady. Around the right side, you have a carrying handle. You have your lamp. Power, high or low. Um, low gives the thousand hours. You have a jack for an auxiliary speaker, a quarter inch earphone jack, an optional remote jack. I wish I had the remote to this, but I don't. And then you have a manual and auto switch. And in auto, it'll advance the um, tones with the uh, what is it, 50. 50 hertz tones and in manual you can play anything. Around the back we have a little door to get to the lamp replacement and then notice to replace it with the DDK model. We have a cord wrap. Uh, they even give you instructions on which way to wrap the cord. Counterclockwise in this case. I guess that's to make sure you can get the plug in its little hole there. And you have a little switch here to switch your uh, projection from the front screen to what they call the rear screen, although I think it's really side screen, so you have to press this in and move it back and forth. Okay, here's the uh, instructions for replacing the lamp. DDK, 40 hours on high, 1,000 hours on low. Gives the part number. And here is the lamp inside this little door. I guess there's the little thing you pull down to release it. Going to the front screen. As you can see here, it'll come out the side. Also on the left side here is a Stand that you can set up to elevate your projector. Doesn't seem very sturdy to me. 
guess you just have to adjust it right. Underneath on the bottom you have a little thing here you can elevate the unit if you need that when you're looking at it in its normal position. And you have your information here. So this is the model 8120. Lamp 80 watts. Audio 5 watts. On the top you have your cassette compartment for listening to tapes. Some tapes have a tone on them, some do not. You've got your standard control, stop, rewind, fast forward, play, stop and eject. And up here you have a place for your film cartridge. Right, this is the little cartridge cassette for the Singer film strips. Strip edge down to about there and close it up for insertion. Well, as a sample of my side projection problem, this right now we're looking at the front screen and you can see two thermostats pretty much complete. Now, when I'm going to switch it to the back, you will not see two thermostats. Alright, I've switched it to this little side projector here. And as you can see, it only seems to project the middle of the frame that the front gets. And it's not a matter of distance. I've tried 25 feet. I've tried 3 feet. Everything is the same. It only projects the middle. Uh, there's something going on in here that this does not make a good distance film strip projector at least the way I'm doing it here trying to get a look in the back and see if I could repair or fix that odd focusing problem on looking out the side mirror the side lens instead of looking at the main screen, and I don't know if I did or not, a little piece of cardboard here is loose and I retaped it. I don't know if that was the problem or not. But you can see the door that swings out front or back depending on where you're looking out this part of the viewer or out the front screen which is up front. It's hard to see but there is a mirror there on the back side of that door that's going to reflect the picture reflect the light out of the front in this position. And let's see, there's our audio, I guess, cassette recorder board. A little film retrieval wheel if needed. And let's see down here. You can see the uh, Two lenses, different lenses, it'll switch depending on where you're at. The DDK bulb, I guess that's what that is. Now there's another little lens there that seems to shoot into the back of the... You just barely see it there. It seems to shoot into the back of the cardboard, so I'm not sure what good it is. I can't plug this in while all this is off. It's too awkward to get the plug around. So I can't test things and find out exactly what they do. And I fixed the little cardboard that I could with scotch tape. And it actually looks like it was fixed a long time ago. I mean, when did I do the last video in this? 2012? 
and I didn't do anything then. I don't remember taking the back off, so somebody before me had it because I've never had the back off. All right, so just for a, sort of a test review, I thought we'd watch a little bit of a business presentation. I think this is from 1982, something like International Energy Systems or something like that for a reflective film on your windows. We are extremely responsive to weather conditions, especially in our dress. Since we cannot regulate the seasons or the weather, our comfort depends greatly on temperature control from within our home, office building, or place of business. In recent years, the one subject that has probably been uppermost in everyone's mind is the energy crisis, and it's no wonder. We're reminded of it every month when the gas and electric bills arrive. Between 1970 and 1980, utility rates nearly doubled. By the year 1990, the cost of energy is expected to have continued increasing at an accelerated rate. Accordingly, the average family will spend approximately $9,400 for utilities the next five years and $24,500 during the next 10. Unfortunately, utility bills will be costing most families an astronomical amount. In summer, a great amount of heat comes through the glass requiring air conditioning to be used excessively to cool comfortably. And in the winter, a great deal of heat leaves your home or office requiring the thermostat to be turned up to heat comfortably. The result? Higher utility costs. Since 1959, reflective film has been used as insulation and protection against extreme weather conditions in astronaut spacesuits as well as on space shuttles. This high technical research now benefits you at down-to-earth prices. When the weather is hot, IES all season reflects up to 80% of the sun's rays, which normally penetrate glass. IES Manufacturing Corporation is one of the largest distributors of reflective film in the world. We have hundreds of distributors and dealers nationally, all available to serve you. Thank you for your attention. The need is everyone's. The decision is yours. surprise there I did not know that thing had uh, advance cones on it I thought I was gonna have to press the forward button every time but because usually if they do they'll say that on the tape and this did not say that so let's rewind it and turn the lamp off actually back into its little cassette. Let's say it's done. So let me get up here and uh, take this out. And so I'll back up into this little cassette here. Here's the instruction manual. You can pause your screen and read these at your leisure.
All right, it looks like it's dated January of 1982. Well, that's been a revisiting of the Singer Instalode 35 film strip projector from 1982. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye. I had lost my little TV guy for about a year, but I finally found him. Appropriate timing.